Welcome to Mark D Maker. My name's Mark Taylor, and we'll be doing some painting today. Now I have gone ahead and carved this log off camera. Um, it just was a square piece of basswood. Uh, I intentionally put this here to help bring the eye up the log to the raccoon, which is going to be sitting on top. It helps the eye move and, and it creates movement in the piece. Here we're going to start off with some gesso. Well, gesso is a, I believe it is a rabbit hide glue with um, I, I'm not sure what is it like a, a like a talc or like a um, ground marble or something in it it gives it tooth I put water in it you can see how thin it is and that jar I held up was a flow medium that just helps the paint flow smoother onto whatever you're painting. Here I'm covering the, the whole dog with this. If you remember, I inserted this tail, which would make it a little tricky to use a, a staining process. You'd see where I used a little bit of plastic wood around the tail because it'll stain at a different rate than the basswood would. So, I'm um, giving it a coat of gesso, plus the dog is white anyway, and I use gesso as white. I don't use white paint. Now, part of the joy of doing uh, these wood carvings is that you do a little bit of research on what you are carving. So I did a little research on uh, a blue tick coon hound. That's, that's what they're called. And uh, pretty interesting dogs. Uh, they were designed for hunting raccoons. Um, they have this bluish gray splotches all over them. Uh, they come in a the coon dogs come in a whole bunch of different colors and and uh, pretty much the same shape, but they have this howl or this this uh, very distinctive bark, like a hound dog. Uh, very energetic dog. Uh, watched a couple of videos on them, and they uh, they need space. They're a they're a very active dog. They want to run and chase and hunt. So here I'm using the gesso on the raccoon. And what you could do here in, instead of white, uh, really the underlying coat of a raccoon is, is a, either a black or a dark gray. Uh, and so what you could do is uh, color the gesso with uh, either ultramarine blue and burnt umber, which gives you a nice dark, rich uh, color, 
and uh, add a little bit of uh, the gouache to it, and that would be your undercoat. Uh, but it's just an, an extra, one extra step for me to uh, put the color on and then uh, start doing dry brushing on it. I'll show you uh, some dry brush technique to try to simulate the fur. All right, we have a little burnt umber here and we're going to paint the log. And we're gonna do this as a stain. And so you see this is a, a little different technique. We'll water down the paint to like a stained water. Couple, couple different, uh, I think that's um, burnt umber and raw umber. And we'll water it down and stain the log. We won't touch the top, I'll leave that natural wood color. But you can see adding quite a bit of water to it. Making it really soupy. <clears throat> I'm just trying to put some color in some different places. Speed it up like two times the speed here. Put on a little thicker in some areas and a little thinner in others. In the where I carved the, the crack that goes from the ground up to uh, the top of the log, I'm going to add a little burnt umber in there, a little bit more condensed, strong, and that darkness will make that crease look deeper and, and pull your eye up the log to the raccoon, the raccoon's looking down, so it'll pull your eye down to the dog. And, and that's kind of like a, a composition. It, it gets your eye kind of moving in this circle and keeps you involved in the, in the sculpture itself. Kind of holds you right there. All right, we're mixing up a gray here. This is just black and white, but it does give a nice, cool blue-gray color, which is going to be a pretty dominant color on the dog. And so I'm going to use that as an under color for the raccoon to uh, Keep the whole color scheme kind of similar and make it look like these two pieces belong together. We're covering the whole thing. This is going to be the under painting of it. And this color is also going to, I might blew it up just a touch for the, uh, for the hound dog. Okay, now I've switched brushes. I have an oil brush. Now the oil brushes are made out of um, hog hair. It's really, they're really stiff, bristled brushes. Um, and, and you can just drive those bristles just straight in in a stipple motion. 
uh, to get these little patchy marks, these little splotches that's typical of the hound dog. And, and there's going to be a lot of layers that go over that of washes of color. Um, but this is, is the, probably the easiest way I know to achieve that. I literally have a picture of the uh, hound dog just off the camera there, and I'm constantly looking at it. I've, this is the first time I've painted uh, a hound dog before. So, and a raccoon actually. <laughs> so I have pictures of these little guys just off screen and I'm constantly looking at them and trying to figure out how am I going to achieve that look. Um, and, and most of the time it's through layering of paint. Um, because that's what I know, that's how I, when I do a, a songbird carving and I'm trying to achieve a color or a look, I'm putting layers of paint on usually thin layers of paint on. It's a very chestnut red color, um, raw sienna, really watered down. And here I'm using a technique where I'm, I've painted around his tail and instead of leaving this hard uh, color line, uh, just take pure water and go around the area and you can see how it's how the paint is fading out almost looks like an airbrush effect it gives it a nice gentle soft uh, fade out a little burnt umber here for the ears It is watered down quite a bit. As you can see that it is somewhat transparent. So the other day I'm at work and I'm meeting with contractors. I meet with contractors a lot. And uh, I asked him, I said, you want to take the elevator or the steps? And he goes, Oh, uh, don't ever trust elevators. I don't trust elevators. And I said, why not? He said, they're always up to something. Oh, man, is that a dad joke or what? So I'm looking at this dog, and he looks like he's got one of those old leather uh, pilot helmets on <laughs> looks like he's ready to go hop on a plane I'll have to do something just a little different with that um, looking at different pictures there's a lot of different choices to make so I'm I'm at this process just constantly making different choices uh, where am I gonna put the black spot how big is it gonna be um, they have all the dogs, none of them look the same as far as uh, all the pictures I have of the blue tick hound dog. But uh, this is pretty representational of them. I think it's uh, pretty decent. So you can see I'm using different grays, different blacks, um, and I just keep going in, in into the areas and, and breaking them up a little bit, adding and adding. I'll let it dry. I'll come back in with a wash, and then I'll go back in and add a little bit more. You can see it. it his helmet's gone now. <laughs> he, uh, he's looking a whole lot more like a dog. 
you can see how how dark those splotchy areas are now because I added a, a wash over top of them and then came in with lighters and, and dark colors just to break it up. And right there, I'm just using clear water to make this area transition a little better so it's not a, just a, a hard line. So part of your paint has to be wet. You create your, your hard line and then you come with water. And just on the outside of where that wet paint is, you put that water and, uh, and then you merge the two and you let that uh, fading happen. Now here I'm using a dry brush technique. And what I'm trying to do is show the under layer of fur. Just, just using a black. And you can use a um, ultramarine blue and, and burnt umber and to get more of a brown, um, brown black. <clears throat> But I'm going to stay consistent because the dog is these colors. I'm going to stay and, and make these colors very similar. It looks like they live in the same world. Now you can see there are some big areas of, of dark color that, you see that patch right there? There's some big areas that are, are really kind of too dark, don't look like fur. I will go back in with another color over top of those, break them up, and it'll look much more natural. Now the hound dog's got this reddish, light kind of uh, reddish kind of color here above his eyes and this white that's pretty typical of hound dog just adding a slight bit of color onto the muzzle there and I'll do the same with the feet and his paws Okay, starting to look like the picture of the dog that I have. Now we'll go and move on to a little bit more dry brushing. Coming in with a lighter color. This is the white. You see how I, when I pick the paint up on the brush, I actually wipe it off before I actually bring it up. So I don't get any big glob or an oversaturation of paint. Now you see here I'm dry brushing the ears, but then I'll go in because the ears have a very white edge all the way around the outside. So that's straight gouache white. Now I'm brushing in little fur marks. They're much more condensed than some of the dry brushed areas are. And don't let me confuse you by using the word gesso or gouache. It's the same stuff. The way I'm bracing that paintbrush on either the carving itself or on my hand that's holding the carving, 
always do that when you're when you're going in for a you know a detailed paint stroke. And there's the very recognizable striped tail of a raccoon. And you notice I'm I'm using the stippling method again. It it just comes across more like uh, fur that way. And I'll still come across the top of it and break it up with other colors. Here I'm just coming in with a little bit more dry brushing, trying to avoid too too big of a glob of or dark patches anywhere I'm just trying to make it look like fur this dry brush technique and I'll come back over again with a lighter color and do the same thing okay so I'm just stepping back taking a look and you can see that the raccoon doesn't look like it has fur it does look like it has uh, different colors now I've gone back in with a small dry brush and you can see that looks a whole lot more like fur and there's a little eyes use the glossy paint and uh, I think it came out pretty good so we'll have him sitting up here and looking down at the dog. And there the dog is. I could probably do a lot more work on him, but I'm satisfied the way he is. Let's call him done. All right, this is what we're looking like. We got our raccoon and hound dog. Oh, and, and by the way, look at this. This is my OCC knife. I just stropped out the two chips I had, one up here and one here, and I get another one. I don't know what's happening to this knife. I haven't used it that much. I'm just, this one seems to be fine. I don't know. I've been I've been carving a long time and I've never had that happen before. Anywho. We're done with the uh, hound dog and the raccoon and now I get to go paint something for Jordy from Carbon Fusion. Oh, he's got something headed his way. Thanks for watching. Hope the video was helpful. Please like, share, subscribe. I'll see you next time.